Russian tortoises are probably not for you. Want to know why? Stick around for these five reasons and decide for yourself. Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. I'll be completely bold. Yellow Aki. Russian tortoises. These are probably the most accessible tortoise you can get, at least in the United States. They are very breedable and they are small, meaning people in the north, northern United States that is, can keep them without worrying about running out of room. So why would you not want to get a Russian tortoise? Well, here are five mainly care-oriented reasons you would probably not want to get a Russian tortoise. Let's hop into it. We have a guest presenter at number five to present glass enclosures. Russian tortoises, they should not be in glass enclosures. Are you choking me out? Not even that, but you want to be well aware of where you access their enclosures because most likely that's going to be some sort of sliding glass or opening glass. And if that alone is on their level, oh my God. Oh, what's wrong? What? <laughs> <laughs> and if that alone is on their level, then that can spell some problems for you. These guys, despite their smaller stature, are pretty strong. I struggle to sometimes just even hold Tortellini. He's got some power in those arms. And if they can see out of their enclosure well enough, they will make an attempt to push against the glass. And they could possibly push out the glass, which means you have a tortoise coming out of the enclosure. You will probably maybe get damaged glass or scratched up glass. And overall, it's not really good for their stress level and they could possibly hurt themselves. So you really don't want to have a lot of transparency in what makes up their enclosure. What I do that works pretty well is put the sliding glass several inches above where their head level is. So they really have to extend and go out of their way to see through that glass and realize there's some transparency and they can see out there. And I've had no problems with frap, or frap, I'm talking about my tegu now, guys. I've really had no issue with tortellini pushing up against the glass or doing anything like that. So that is one viable method of going about it. A good enclosure setup that nullifies this issue completely is to do some sort of trough setup. I am actually doing my next enclosure for tortellini when I move in a 300 gallon round trough tank setup. I think it's called a stock tank. I'm just gonna get it from a tractor supply co. They sell them. It's cheap, it's only a couple hundred dollars and it works really well. It's open top too, which a lot of people like to do with tortoises. So if you can have them in a controlled environment where the temperature is not gonna fluctuate too much, that's a good enclosure to go with and nullifies the glass problem completely. But if either of these options I gave you to rectify a glass issue are not capable in your hands, I would not get a Russian tortoise. They really can do some damage to themselves and really get stressed out by being in a glass setup. And we're not even talking about glass tanks. If you're thinking a glass tank, then you really need to do some research. So if you fall through this category, rethink getting a Russian tortoise. By the way, guys, if you are here because you love Russian tortoise content and Russian tortoises in general, I'm doing two Russian tortoise videos at least a month. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be updated whenever I post one of those videos. Not only do you need to reduce the transparency of the enclosure, but you also need to give a good amount of substrate because they are a burrowing species. There are many times that Tortellini will completely disappear like a magician and I will not be able to find them. I mean, they have that brown shell and like I said, they burrow and they will burrow pretty deep. You want to give at least the same amount of substrate as the height of the Russian tortoise. If you can't do this, then I would not get a Russian tortoise. They rely on this quite a lot and it's very natural for them to do this and they will not feel as secure if you can't provide that substrate depth. Additionally, there should be no reason you wouldn't provide this. It's pretty simple, it doesn't cost a lot. I guess you need to factor it into the overall enclosure design, but it's really just mainly topsoil in my design. And how tall is a Russian tortoise really? Maybe six to eight inches? I mean, if you have a female, it's gonna be a little bit deeper because they're larger than males. But overall, it's essentially nothing, and you probably could easily provide a foot of substrate, which I would recommend, honestly, just go with a foot. Inexpensive, just think about it in the enclosure. You're already going to have to do some sort of DIY or custom commercial option because you can't do glass, so it's really easy to factor that in, and it should be a no-problem scenario. Now, number three is an important one that many do not consider in this particular light, 
And number four kind of works its way into it of why substrate depth is even more important, and that's humidity. Now you might be saying, I know humidity for Russian tortoises, you keep it low. I usually keep mine around room humidity, which is usually around 30 to 40 percent in the air. But what you might not know is they actually enjoy some spurts of high humidity. And that's why substrate depth is important because sometimes they will burrow in moister areas because that helps occasionally with sheds and they do need high humid spurts. They really do. And sometimes when they come upon water, they'll sit in there. And I actually recommend that a lot. If you could get a water bowl that's sort of a walk-in one, get that because they can get some of their humidity and moisture requirement when they want it from there. And you don't need to give them that occasional bath because they'll sort of bathe themselves. Basically what I'm saying is if this occasional high humidity requirement is news to you, then you probably did not dig deep enough to learn about Russian tortoises and really what they experience out in their natural habitat and how to keep them. Last thing I want to know is there's a flip side to this. Obviously, like I'm saying, they enjoy those high humidity spurts, but don't let that high humidity spurt turn into a full week or couple week thing, you know what I mean? That would become a high humidity environment and you don't want that. They are a dry environment, but you might want a day or less where it's high humidity in there and they could kind of enjoy that a little bit. So do understand and know Know your enclosure and know how it works. I mean, these bad boys right behind me from Animal Plastics hold humidity really well. These are for Ackies, not a Russian tortoise. So I would know that I shouldn't add that much moisture. So be aware of that. That's our number three. Our number two and number one, though, are as equally important. And number two is space. Russian tortoises, and I've said this countless times, require a good amount of space despite them being a small tortoise. Tortoises in general love to travel. They love to graze. You want to give them the ability to do that. And that requires space. Additionally, a lot of tortoise enrichment comes from different vertical heights and depths. So that's what you can provide in a large area and something you can't provide in a smaller area. Again, this is a real simple solve if you get something like a 300 gallon trough. Cheap, easy to set up, and ideally a good tortoise enclosure. No glass, transparency, it's everything you want. And it gives plenty of space especially. I would recommend nothing short of probably like a six by three feet. I'm not gonna really determine height. You could probably do like a two foot high enclosure. It kind of depends on the UVB bulb you're doing. But anything lower than that is probably not gonna give them enough space to travel and maneuver around. It's really important for them and it will definitely give you perhaps a depressed tortoise if you don't give them enough space to travel and explore. So if you're short on space as it is, then a Russian tortoise might not be the ideal exotic pet to get, ideal reptile to get. You might wanna look at something that has a little bit lower of an enclosure size requirement because you really need to do justice to these tortoises and don't underestimate how much space they actually use. Finally, number one, and I hate to do another cliche one, it's their diet. Diet is just so important to Russian tortoises and often very misunderstood. In the past, I referenced people posting cute little pictures of a Russian tortoise eating a strawberry on like a Facebook or Twitter and then people are like, oh, that's so cute. I want to give one to my Russian tortoise. No, Karen, don't do that. Yes, it's adorable and yes, you can very sparingly give a sugary treat, but they are highly addictive to tortoises. In fact, a lot of people might give something like a little bit of a strawberry and then the tortoise will probably reject anything else for a good amount of time until they kind of get starved out, which a lot of people won't do. And then they'll just go back to the thing they will guarantee to eat, which is that strawberry. Additionally, sugars really deteriorate their health system or their just inner body. I, I'm not a vet, I, I don't know the semantics here. But essentially think if I ate Kit Kats every day, my meal all the time, I would probably not last very long. And yes, Kit Kats are better than Reese's. That's why I went with that. What you should be doing is giving a diet of primarily dark leafy greens. You have your collard greens, you have mustard greens, turnip greens. The occasional kale is okay. Endives, that's a big one with my tortellini. He loves endives. These are the main diet of a Russian tortoise. This is what you should be offering. So if you thought otherwise, if you just wanted to get a Russian tortoise because you thought it was cute eating a strawberry on social media, maybe rethink that or just dig a little bit deeper and really understand their main diet. The only non-dark leafy green that I give 
tortellini is the occasional butternut squash. Now this holds a good amount of moisture, which is really good for hydration and such. Additionally, it is definitely not as bad sugar-wise as let's say a strawberry. So that is a good treat to offer occasionally, and it's not as addictive. So that's something you can do. I really would never offer a strawberry personally. I, I really don't think there's any good to that, if that makes sense. So think that through, but that's our final number one on this five list. All right, guys, a different approach from my other iterations of this video focusing on Aggie monitors and tegus. Those focus more on you as a person, where this focused more on care. And that's because I feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding around Russian tortoise care. And they are very popular, but they're just not talked about as often. So I wanted to focus more on care in this video. I hope you guys appreciated it. And let me know if you have any comments about the five or any additional ones you would add to this five list in a comment below. Otherwise, you guys could get $5 off your first purchase of Reptilinks by using code ProfessorHerb at checkout. I feed Reptilinks to my Tegu Frappuccino, but they could also be fed to hognose snakes, blue tongued skinks, and more. $5 off your first purchase with Professor Herp at checkout. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.